What do we know? Yeah, Paul, we know that there were um, a, a lot of airstrikes on, on that refugee camp and that several apartment buildings were hit. We don't know the number of uh, wounded or, or dead uh, yet, but um, it was a, a major strike and the apartment buildings that had stood there were turned at, were really leveled. They were turned into craters. Uh, and of course, this comes as there's a lot of uh, calls uh, throughout the world, uh, a lot of concerns about uh, refugees uh, within Gaza and the civilian casualties, uh, as well as the worsening uh, critical uh, humanitarian situation there. So whenever this happens, uh, there there are calls for a ceasefire. We have heard from uh, President uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu saying that he will not have a ceasefire. But again, whenever civilians are struck, and especially in this very visible way, uh, that will certainly increase calls for that. There has been a lot of debate about whether a ceasefire is needed between Gaza, between Hamas and Israel, right? And the U.S. really wanting for a pause instead of a ceasefire. Take a listen first to what Secretary Blinken had to say about this. When it comes to a ceasefire, in this moment, you're exactly right. Uh, that would simply consolidate what Hamas has been able uh, to do uh, and allow it uh, to uh, remain where it is and potentially repeat what it did uh, another day. And that's not tolerable. So what's the message right now? Yeah, the message that we heard from the Secretary of State, who was testifying uh, on, in the Senate today, uh, as well as uh, his, his defense secretary, counterpart, counterpart Lloyd Austin, was that they want to see this funding. They want to see the funding for both Israel and Ukraine rushed there. They say that by either separating it or delaying it, all we are allowing is these situations to worsen. So they were making that statement at the same time as we heard uh, the Secretary of State there really doubled down on previous comments of the administration that it is not time for a ceasefire. A ceasefire would, he said, play into the hands of Hamas. Now, they're talking about a pause, and experts we talk to say a pause is different. It's not just linguistic, that that would allow some more humanitarian aid to get into Gaza, because the administration right now is saying it has two goals. It is, it is supporting Israel. It is supporting Israel in its military fight against Hamas, and it supports Supports the need for Israel to defend itself, yet at the same time is very concerned about the worsening uh, crisis, and particularly the worsening crisis among the refugees, and wants to get aid in there and wants to be able to get people to leave if they can. So the U.S. is trying to balance those two needs, and that's what we heard from both of those secretaries, those cabinet secretaries on Capitol Hill today. Well, we've got a new House Speaker, of course, in the U.S., that's Mike Johnson, and he's put together an Israeli aid proposal, but it's not done too well. How's he faring in his first big test as Speaker? Yeah, it's, it's been a couple, tough couple days for the new speaker. Uh, while the uh, secretaries, as we said, were on the Hill today, they were asking uh, for support for a $106 billion aid package to both Israel and Ukraine, some money for Taiwan in there. Uh, the new House speaker only wants $14 billion, and he says it should be a rush job for Israel, that that money should come right away, it should just be for Israel, and that Ukraine will have to wait. That did not do very well in the Senate, where we're seeing really bipartisan support for the administration's uh, uh, request for this emergency funding, what we call a supplemental. Uh, and so he's getting some pushback. The other thing he's getting pushback about is how he would pay for it by basically uh, taking some money that was uh, earmarked for IRS enforcement, more uh, I, you know, more IRS agents, better technology, modernizing the IRS so that it can collect more money. And a lot of people, uh, of obviously Democrats, but also Republicans are saying that is not what you want to be doing right now. You shouldn't go after the IRS money to try to fund uh, an emergency supplemental.